If you're new to SketchUp, chances are you're making some mistakes that could cost you hours of time and tons of frustration. That's why I'm breaking down the 10 commandments of SketchUp, the biggest beginner pitfalls you need to avoid to have a great workflow. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. Commandment one, thou shalt not click and drag. This is something I run into a lot with students that have used Illustrator. What they wanna do is they wanna activate a tool and then they wanna click and hold their mouse button down and move an object like this. Now, you can definitely do that, but the problem is there's a lack of control associated with it. Instead, what they should be doing is activating a tool, single clicking. So in this case, I've tapped the M key, I've single clicked, and I've moved my mouse. And then you can either click again or type in a value in order to set how far you want this to go. So when you're thinking about moving objects, you need to think about a click, move, click workflow. This is also true for things like push pulling shapes. Don't click and drag up when you do this, because then again, it's really hard to type in values. Instead, single click and either move your mouse in order to inference to a point or type in the height at which you want to extrude something. Tip two, thou shalt group your geometry. So this is something you'll see a lot in models in the 3D warehouse, but if you're not careful, it can happen to you as well. This model looks great, but it's nothing but raw geometry. Now the problem with raw geometry is now if I try to edit it, it's just gonna make a giant mess. So if I wanted to come in here and adjust the window location, for example, that's very difficult to do because all of the geometry is stuck together. And so because the geometry is stuck together, coming in here and picking things in order to tag them or to hide them or to move them around is extremely difficult. So this model is great as long as you don't have to make any changes. But as soon as you have to make changes to things like these openings, it can get really tricky to make those changes. Instead, what you should do is you should model and group as you go. So in this situation, for example, before I extrude this wall, what I want to do is I want to right click on it and I want to make it a group. Then I can double click into the group and I can start extruding objects up like this. So now I can click out of this group and notice how this wall is grouped, which allows me to then take that group and tag it. So in this case, I would tag this with a tag for exterior walls and put that on the tag like this. Now I can toggle the wall on and off and I can also double click into the object in order to make changes. And so when you have this complete, it's gonna look something like this. And notice how I have the option to toggle off all the different individual parts and pieces like this so that I can get to them quickly and make edits. This also gets really important when you start going over into layout and creating plans um, because you can set different things to different tags in order to have viewports that you can use to create different line weights. So grouping your geometry is about one of the most important things you can do in SketchUp. Commandment three, you must model on axis. This is actually something that more beginners struggle with than you would expect. I think I've seen this in just about every single beginner model. So the way SketchUp works is it draws in a face if you have three or more coplanar edges. So in this situation, notice how I get a face if I draw this all the way in. However, a lot of beginners aren't diligent about making sure that things are drawn along the model axes. So what happens is they run into this issue where they can't get their faces to fill in and close, right? And the reason for that is because all of these faces are not on the same level. Now, an easy way to avoid this is to use inferencing. And there's multiple different ways that you can do this. So for example, say that we were drawing a line, instead of just moving your mouse like this and hoping, when you single click to set that line, you can tap the left, right, or up arrow keys to lock to the different axes and then draw in those directions. So in this case, I could lock to those directions like this, and I can tap the left arrow key, and I can just draw like this. You can also use inferencing by holding the shift key in order to lock an inference direction and then inference to a point. But as long as you do this, you can be sure that you're drawing on a flat surface and a face will form. This can be massively important when you're dealing with issues like this one, where I have one point 
over here that's up by a quarter inch from everything else. You can't even see it. And so now if I draw a bunch of edges in here to try to dr try to find faces, notice how I'm going to have issues where this isn't going to completely heal in until I draw over this corner right here. And the reason for that is because this whole thing is not flat. So we've got a little bit of an off axis and I'll draw a line down here so you can see it. It's off by this much. And so when you're drawing a surface like this one, you can use that inferencing. Now, another fun tip, tuple, couple this with the grouping, is if you want to group an object right here and then draw, notice how I get the little purple point on here. That means I'm drawing on a face. So what I've done is I've just drawn a flat surface and I've put it on a group, but now I can see when I draw on this surface, that I'm on a face in the group. So things are working the way that they're supposed to, and I can actually visually see that I'm drawing on a flat face like this so that I know my surface is going to draw flat. And then when you're done, you can just erase out that group surface. So this next one is very important. Thou shalt use keyboard shortcuts. Now, a lot of beginners, when they start, like to use the visual icons over here in order to activate tools. So say, for example, they wanted to draw a small house. They would start just by drawing a line here, then they would draw a line across and over. But then as soon as they need to use another tool, they're going to select objects and they're going to do things like coming over here and finding the offset function and then clicking back into the model like this in order to start drawing like this. But this can get very slow because every time you need to activate a tool, you need to go back over here in order to select it. Instead, what I recommend is using keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts are the keys on your keyboard that can activate different tools very quickly. And if you want a downloadable guide. I have a link to that inside of my 10 commandments cheat sheet, um, which you can download by going to the sketchupessentials.com slash commandments. But notice how much more quickly I can model by tapping the R key and then typing in eight foot comma five foot and then tapping the F key to activate the offset tool and then offsetting this end and then tapping the P key in order to activate the push pull tool. And so then I can tap the T key in order to activate this. So you can see how this is a much quicker way to model by actually using keyboard shortcuts in order to model things inside of your model. And so you can also create your own custom keyboard shortcuts by going to window preferences shortcuts. And so in this case, for example, I've added a shortcut that toggles on the hide rest of model. So I could look for hide rest of model and notice how I've set a keyboard shortcut of shift H. So what that means is that means that when I double click into a component, I can hit shift H in order to toggle on hide rest of model mode when I'm editing a group like this so that I can isolate things like this, but I can turn that on and off by typing shift H on my keyboard. So you can set your own custom keyboard shortcuts as well. So another massive mistake I see new SketchUp users make is they spend a lot of time trying to model out things like furnishings when they don't really need to do that. Um, either those objects aren't important to their model. Or in this case, for example, you could download models like this from the 3D warehouse so that you don't have to come in here and do all the modeling yourself. So it's much faster to go into 3D warehouse and look for some sort of a desk and then download that into your model instead of modeling it yourself. So say that we wanted a Samson desk, for example, we could just download this into our model just like this. And so what I have is I have a 3D warehouse model it's living in here instead of me having to figure out how to model all of this myself. This is especially helpful for things like chairs um, that have a bunch of heavy duty or complex geometry and you just shouldn't be spending your time modeling things like that unless you really need to. So a bonus tip is the 3D Warehouse has an image search tool that you can activate on the front page right here, and then you can click and drag an image and it's going to search the warehouse based on that image. So notice how I'm able to come in here and I'm able to find things like this Herman Miller chair um, and bring it directly into SketchUp. So I could bring this whole thing in right here and I could use this without ever having to model the chair myself. Um, I could just bring it in from the 3D warehouse. So commandment six, 
thou shalt not remodel symmetrical geometry. And so the easiest way to save time when working in SketchUp is just to not model something twice. And so this is a great example. Um, if you're trying to create a ramp in here, you have to create kind of a curve that follows along edges over here like this before you generate your surface. Once you do that, you can use an extension like Soap Skin and Bubble in order to create a surface like this in order to generate this surface. Now, what you don't want to do is go through and draw all of these edges on this surface so that you have a frame and then redraw them over here. Instead, what you want to do is you just want to make this object a component. Then you want to create a copy of it using the flip tool. And now you have two copies of this. Well, now if I come in here and I do things like softening my edges, Notice how that changed when I make it on one side, it's going to happen on the other as well. Well, then with the components, you can just double click and you can just soften this edge in between so that you don't have a seam between the objects. And note that when you're working with symmetrical objects, you don't always have to copy the geometry or flip the geometry. But what you should do is you should create copies of components for repeating shapes. So for example, if I've got these table legs in here, if I make all of these table legs components, notice how all of them change when I make an adjustment like this. And so when you're, whenever you're working with a repeating geometry like this that's symmetrical, you want to make sure that you're using those components in here so that you only have to edit things once instead of multiple times when you're doing work inside of your model. Coming in at number seven, thou shalt save interior views. So if you have a building like this one and you're doing a lot of navigating from outside to inside, it can get really frustrating trying to get your camera to the proper location to see things um, because you can rotate through walls. It's really easy to get stuck in walls and other things like that. Once you get to the view that you want, it can be a lot of work getting back to that view. What you should do instead is once you get to a view that you like, you should save it by going to view, animation, add scene. And so when you add scenes, you can save different camera locations as well as other things about the camera like shadow settings and more. So you can set up multiple different scenes and you can get back to them quickly rather than having to navigate to them over and over and over again. Kind of a bonus tip on this is set up a lightweight working view on just the exterior of your building that has the lightest weight settings possible so that you can do quick modeling changes and other things like that. Commandment number eight has to do with selections and it's thou shalt use left to right or right to left selection. And what a lot of people don't know is when you try to select things using a selection box in SketchUp, the direction that you drag matters. So if you dragged from left to right, you get a box of the straight line. If you drag from right to left, you get a dotted line. And so the way that you select is going to act differently depending on the direction that you pick here. So if you drag from left to right, and you drag a box, SketchUp is only going to select things that are completely inside of that selection box. So anything that isn't all the way in the selection box, like these edges, for example, will not be selected. However, if you do a right to left selection, everything that that box touches will also be in the selection. So everything in the box and everything it touches. So notice how this selects all of the edges and faces that that touched instead of only picking up the boxes. So if I do a right to left right here, notice how that's going to pick up all the faces. If I do a left to right, it's only going to pick up the edges and faces in the middle of this object. This also applies for 3D objects. So if I drag left to right, only the boxes that are 100% inside of the box will be selected. However, if I drag right to left, every object that the box touches will be selected as well. Note that this is also something that happens with the lasso select tool. So with the lasso select tool, anything that's 100% inside of your lasso will be selected right here. And again, that's a left to right selection. So only the things that were fully in the box show up in here. However, if you do a right to left selection, anything that, that selection box touches, even if it's not fully inside of the box, will be selected like this. So commandment nine, 
thou shalt move with precision. So when you're working with a 3D engine like SketchUp, moving things into specific points in space, especially if you don't have an inference point, can be really hard because the engine is just kind of guessing where an object should go in the 3D space. So being precise in where that goes can be really tricky. However, if you don't have a point to inference to and you need to get to a specific point in space, what you can do is you can move the object precisely by breaking up the movement into three steps. So say we needed to move this to a point in space that's 10 feet one direction, five feet another, and eight feet in a third. What you can do is you can break that up into three movements. So you can move this along the green axis, 10 feet. You can move along the red axis, five feet. And then you can move it up eight feet in order to get to that point in 3D space. So by breaking a movement into three movements in SketchUp, if you don't have something to inference to, this can be extremely valuable. Another way you could approach this if you want to find a point in space is you could draw a line that's 10 feet, draw a line that's 5 feet, draw a line that's 8 feet, and then you could use inferencing in order to move to the point in space like this and then erase out those edges. So breaking movements up into three movements to get to a specific point in the 3D space can help you be much more precise. And commandment 10 has to do with the copying of objects in SketchUp. Lots of users think that they should be doing a control C and a control V to copy objects inside of the 3D space. However, copy paste is not the best way to create copies of objects in SketchUp. Instead, commandment 10, thou shalt copy with the move tool. So the move tool is an extremely powerful tool because it also has a copy mode built in. So say that I want to create copies of chairs, I can activate the move tool by tapping the M key. And then once I set a base point, you can tap the control key in order to go into a copy mode. So what that's going to do is that's going to create a copy in the space, and then you can set whatever distance you want for that object. That by itself is extremely powerful. However, the move tool also has an array copy mode. So if I set a base point, on this object and I tap the control key and say that I want another one of these objects placed every two foot or so. So what you can do is you can use the move tool in copy mode. We're going to move our mouse and we're going to click in order to set our first object. We're going to take our hand off of the mouse. So don't click on anything else. And we're going to type in star and then a number of copies. So in this case, I'm going to hit three. And I'm going to hit the enter key. What that's going to do is that's going to create three equally spaced copies. One of the cool things about this is this is still active as long as I don't click out of the tool. So if I type in times four, it's going to create four copies. If I type in times two, it's going to adjust this down to two copies. So you can use this array copy mode in order to really quickly create these copies. You can also use the move tool in copy mode. So tap M, tap control, single click and you can set this copy right here which is my end copy you can type a forward slash and a number of copies so in this case i typed in slash four and hit the enter key or slash three or slash two i can just keep creating copies in here until i'm done with this and then bonus tip that i use a lot is not only can you create copies using the move tool and the rotate tool in this way you can also create copies with the flip tool so the flip tool allows you to activate the tool with a selection and you can click and drag this box. Well, notice if I tap the control key while I'm clicking and dragging, this is going to allow me to set a flip plane. And when I let up on it, it's going to create copies of these objects across the plane based on where I'd set them. So the flip tool is also a very valuable tool for creating copies in SketchUp. So if you want to download the whole commandments guide, including a free printable keyboard shortcuts guide for SketchUp, you can do that at the sketchupessentials.com slash commandments. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think are the most vital tips for a SketchUp workflow? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.